Welcome to Build It's Blender rigging tutorial. If you've been following along, you should have learned some basic 3D modeling and texturing, and in this episode, we'll start to create more complex movement with your models in Blender. Rigging can be used for more complex animation, as well as helping you create forms while 3D modeling. Rigging works by parenting weighted vertices to an armature. You can think of the mesh as your skin and the armature as your bones. Your skin will follow the movement of your bones. Weight is how much a bone will pull at a vertice. If you look at your wrists and move your arms around, you can see that certain parts of your skin moves differently than other parts of your skin. And that's something you can actually control in Blender. So if I go into pose mode while selecting my armature down here and selecting a certain bone and then going into the mesh that I have parented to the armature and selecting weight paint, you can see that this selected bones affects these vertices more than it affects these vertices down here. And you can see that's true when I start to rotate and move it around. And then you can also just select the bottom one as well. So weight paint is actually the reason why we're doing these tutorials in Blender 2.79 rather than the new Blender 2.8 because weight painting is a little buggy in the new version. If you prefer 2.8, you can always still 3D model in 2.8, import it as like an OBJ or an SDL to 2.79 to rig and bring it back into 2.8 to animate. We'll come back to this later. Another key thing is that you need enough vertices to be pulled around by the armature. Here we can see that I have two identical blocks. In edit mode, you can see that this block has more vertices than this block. So if I go into pose mode again for this one, you can see that this moves around a lot differently than this. Now let's move on to a more real world example of using rigs by doing a simple stick figure. Keeping in mind that we will need vertices where things bend, let's just make a block figure to rig. So let me just hide these blocks, making sure I'm in object mode, using A to select all and H to hide. I'm going to just use Shift S to move my cursor to the center and Shift A to make a cube. So I'm going to go to object edit mode, see here, just to let's scale this so it's longer, it's about torso length maybe. Um, let's make it a little less cubicle. I'm going to make some edge loops just to block out where I'm going to have the legs um, and where I'm going to have the arms come out of. So here, so I'm just going to pull my legs from here eventually and my head from here. Yeah, that looks about good. I'm going to go into face mode, use E for extrude. That will be my head. I'm going to select both of these, E and scale Y to make the arms. And then let's pull out the legs from here. So E again. And then make sure I'm at Z so that I'm Cool, let's just work with that. So this T pose is a very common starting point for rigging, especially if you're doing characters. And that's just like a good way to make sure that the arm bones are not affecting different parts of the body. So let's also, while we're keeping in mind that we need to be able to make him move, I'm going to add some edge loops for the elbows. So let's say three. And I'm going to scale Y them to 0.4. Do the same thing on the other side. Scale Y, 0.4. And then scale for the knees, scale Z point three. 
for this, I'm really just looking at this number, oop, this number on this bar that tells me how much I'm scaling it, and then just making kind of like a guess about where it should be. And then I'm going to make some cuts so that he can bend at the waist naturally. So now let's make our first bone. I'm just going to do Shift A, Armature, Single Bone. Because I can't see it while it's inside my mesh, I'm going to go on the Properties bar where this little person is. That's our armature. And then I can do X-Ray so that I can see it through my mesh. Then I'm going to just drag it down to maybe like where his waist would be. And then go into Edit Mode. So this first bone I'm going to make into my base bone. And a base bone is just really good practice so that you can just grab your whole model around without really messing with the bones that are actually doing something. So I want to turn this rig around. So I'm going to do Shift S, cursor to selected, and then rotate. Oops, I forgot to turn my pivot point into the 3D cursor. And then rotate Y so that it's at 90 degrees. And this is just so that it's more obvious that this is the bone that we should be using to grab the whole model with. So all of the bones will be parented to this bone. So then while I'm selecting this, I'm going to select make my first spine bone. So I'm going to do E, Z to extrude upwards with that bone. So this bone is a little long. I'm going to subdivide it in order to make it so that we can bend him at the waist. So I'm going to do W for specials and hit subdivide. You can see that I subdivided it into two parts. I can affect that over here and I can subdivide into two, three with two cuts. So that is going to be my spine. A really important thing is just to make sure that you're naming all your bones. So I'm going to go here, select that skeleton, and then select bone. This will be my base bone. This here is, let's say, spine one. We'll call this one spine two. And this one spine three. Then let me extrude another one for the neck. Make this one the neck bone. Extrude one big one for the head. And this is just a really basic first rig that we'll do. Eventually you're gonna wanna do things like make eyes or a smile and add more vertices so that you can play around with the face. Okay, now I'm going to do the arms and the legs. So I'm just going to move my cursor to where I think my arm is going to start. Maybe here. And then doing Shift A. I'm going to make sure that, again, the 3D cursor is my pivot point. So I can just rotate this bone around the x-axis. Negative 90. It's a little high. I'll just move it towards the center of the arm. And then extrude Y for my forearm. So I'm going to also make sure in my mesh, oh, that's actually perfect, where my elbow is, is where the joints are in my armatures. So I'm going to move this back a little bit so it kind of lines up with the rest of my bones. And then I'm going to want to parent this disconnected bone to the rest of the armature. So I'm going to select the child bone first, and then the bone I want it to be parented to, and then control P and keep offset. And you can see that there's a little parenting line that goes there now. So when I move, oops, when I move this bone in pose mode, those bones move as well. Back to edit mode, I'm going to do the same thing with my legs basically. Move that down, extrude it down. Make sure that that's kind of where my knee is. And parent the thigh bone to my first spine bone. 
So, oops, let's make sure that this is in line as well. Okay, now this is where naming gets really important. So I'm gonna call this one upper arm dot L. I'm just gonna decide that this is the left side of the body. And this is my forearm dot L. This is my thigh dot L. And this is my calf dot L. You can imagine how if you had a ton of finger bones and toes that this could be very tedious to be naming everything. So that's why I did everything on my left side first. Then I'm going to select all of those bones, hit W for symmetrize, and it created these new bones behind there. I'm going to move my cursor to the center, which is also the center of my model. Then I'm going to do scale Y negative 1 so that all those bones are mirrored on the other side. Now if I select them, you can see that these names turn to dot R for right. So that's just a neat little thing that Blender does for you. So now that my rig is ready, I'm going to want to parent my mesh to my rig. So I'm first going to select my mesh, then the armature. I'm going to do Control P and make sure that I'm selecting Set Parent to Armature Deform with automatic weights. So this will first do all my weight painting for me. And then I can go back and edit that if I wanted to. So let me just see how well it automatically weighted things for me. I'm going to select the armature. I'm going to select this one. Okay, so I can see that this did not get parented. So I'm just going to parent And then I'm going to make sure that this is not deforming anything because I just want this to be my base bone. There you go. And then here you can see him bend, more bending. Okay, so you can see here that this one kind of folds in on itself. That's partly because I don't have enough vertices and partly because I can fix that with weight painting, or try to. You can see that this arm is affecting the head, which I don't want. Okay, so I'm going to select A for all, Alt R to rotate everything back to normal. Then let's move on to our mesh and weight painting. So here, if I select each bone you can see what vertices it is controlling. Here on the side are my weight paint brushes so if I select this so the ones that I want to worry about are add, subtract, and maybe blur. So add adds more weight, subtract takes away weight so you can see that here and blur tries to even out the differences between nearby vertices. Here you can see the amount of weight that it can affect, the radius of my brush, the strength of the brush. Okay, so let me try to fix some of the problems I was seeing before. So I didn't like the way that it was affecting these nearby vertices on the arm. And I only want it to affect the neck so I'm going to try to my best to take away some of that light blue color around the neck. Let's see how that worked. Yeah that's better so now it's not really affecting the rest of the arm. Oh but I forgot this patch now it's affecting like the back area. Yeah that looks not bad. A lot of this is just trial and error. You want to put your mesh in different poses just to make sure that everything is looking correct no matter how the character moves. 
And because we don't have a ton of vertices, not everything's going to look super good. So you just want to make sure that when you do rake something, that you have an appropriate amount of vertices to make things move properly. And that's it. So now you can go into pose mode. You can still play around and see if there's any weird things happening. But you can put him into poses. And you can even save his model to look like the pose that you gave him. And that is the basic raking tutorial.